Tonight on WBOC News at 11. The war in Afghanistan has ended, but the threat persists. President Biden holds steady in his decision to withdraw troops, but what are the next steps? Also ahead, the Calder wildfire spreads across the West with hundreds of homes already destroyed. Many are wondering if there's an end in sight. Finally, air travel continues to be an issue with the new Delta variant. This recent COVID surge is resulting in travel restrictions in Europe. Covering all of Delmarva, this is WBOC News at 11, Delmarva's news leader. Good evening, I'm Chris Weimer. Welcome to WBOC News at 11. Today, President Biden said his decision to end America's longest war in Afghanistan was the right one despite leaving U.S. citizens behind. The State Department says it has been in contact with some of those Americans as the administration also vets tens of thousands of Afghan refugees. Natalie Brand reports from the White House. President Biden addressed the nation less than 24 hours after the last U.S. soldier, Major General Chris Donahue, left Afghanistan, ending a two decades long war. I was not going to extend this forever war. And I was not extending a forever exit. The president says military commanders on the ground advised that ending the mission as planned was the best way to protect the lives of U.S. troops. For any soldier, sailor, airman or marine and their family your service mattered and was not in vain the administration estimates more than 122,000 people were evacuated while around 300 americans remain in afghanistan americans need to be able to be brought home this cannot be our history there is not an end to our commitment to american citizens who are in afghanistan who want to leave the State Department has moved diplomatic operations from Kabul to Doha, Qatar. Critics of the complete withdrawal from Afghanistan worry that it will impede the U.S.'s ability to collect intelligence and protect against future threats. We can strike terrorists and targets without American boots on the ground. U.S. law enforcement officials confirmed to CBS News the Department of Homeland Security has issued warnings that extremists could seek to exploit the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. DHS has deployed staff to assist in vetting the tens of thousands of Afghan allies arriving to the U.S. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, the White House. The U.S. can currently house more than 28,000 Afghan refugees at seven military installations across the country. Officials are working to expand the capacity to up to 50,000. The House of Freedom Caucus spoke out today on not only Afghanistan, but President Biden. The Freedom Caucus, consisting of Republican House members, held a news conference and condemned the actions taken by the Biden administration during the evacuations in Afghanistan. Also in the conference, a call for the resignation of President Joe Biden. Joe Biden, or whoever's telling him what to do nowadays, made the Taliban stronger than ever. Make no mistake, members of the House Freedom Caucus are not standing here today because Nancy Pelosi called for an emergency session of Congress. No, we're standing here because Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, and Kamala Harris, and every person they have put in a position of leadership failed our brave men and women. In addition, they urged House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to call Congress back into session to address the situation in Afghanistan, or they said she should vacate her chair. Afghanistan's health care system could collapse because of lack of support. MSF, commonly known as Doctors Without Borders, representative says the collapse could come as foreign doors stop providing aid following the takeover. By the Taliban, MSF, one of the largest medical aid agencies in Afghanistan, has vowed that its team across the country will stay put. During Taliban rule in Afghanistan from 96 to 2001, MSF had a fraught relationship with the group, was eventually expelled from the country in 1998. The Taliban says it welcomes foreign donors and has vowed to protect the rights of international aid staff who wish to remain in the country.